Hi, I'm Katie Pushpam. And welcome to Theatre Bound, a channel dedicated to all things theatre. And for this video, I'm going to talk about Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is probably one of the most famous gothic novels out there that have inspired theatre makers and filmmakers alike. How do you explain such a beautiful piece of literary work? I have one word for you. Drunk. So for this video I'm going to talk about Dracula well drunk. This video has been inspired by the Sebastian Thief, also known as Alejandro Ansel. When he's not stealing Sebastian, he's also an excellent photographer. I've left a link in the description of his amazing work. Check it out. Okay, so there's only one thing to do. I'm going to go get drunk. See you later. I'm back. But I've had some slight lighting difficulties. Difficulties being, I should have set up lighting before I got drunk, but I didn't. So here we are, hence why the shitty lighting. <laughs> oh, and I've changed into my cool, creepy, velvet thing. I, I actually don't know what it's called. And my hair's up, so continuity. Fuck you, future Katie. Continuity can go out the window. So, let's get started. Let's talk about Dracula. I'm so excited. So drunk. Let's do this shit. What am I doing? I was gonna try to do this thing like, oh, look what I'm drinking, like in that time. I don't like beer. I love beer. I love beer so much. So that's all I am. So instead, look at this cool cup. Isn't it cool? It was like a euro. I just bought them because I thought they looked cool. So I'm gonna put my beer into this. Good beer. So this is what I'm drinking out of. Oh, it's so cool. It's like Victorian looking. Anyway, what's Dracula about? It was written in 1897 by Bram Stoker, an Irish author. It was me, it was me too. And he wrote this. It's called a gothic horror novel slash fantasy, I think. Yeah, whatever. He wrote this, it's probably the most famous pieces of work out there. It's also known, yeah, that's what it is. Vampire fantasies. I'm on a chair, so I'm swiveling. Focus, focus. Dracula, what happens in the story? Dracula starts out with Jonathan Harker. Those names, I can't even remember. Is it Jonathan Harker? So Jonathan Harker, he's a lawyer and he goes all the way to Dracula's castle, all the way in Transylvania. He's just a new aspiring lawyer. He's just eager to finalize his money. Monty. Hunty. He gets there, but before he gets there, everyone's like really creeped out. He's like, why are you going there? Like, this is a terrible place. Don't go there. And he's like, no, I take money really seriously. I take my job really seriously. So I'm gonna go there. Anyway, he gets there, gets to Dracula's castle. And he's like, crap bags, this is really creepy. Goes in anyway, cause he's a dedicated lawyer. He wants to do his job. He gets in there. He's like, hey, how are you? You look very thin and pale, but we're gonna ignore that. Let's get these figures finalized, cause I'm a lawyer. Then he gets in there and he's like, this place is creepy as, and he starts shaving himself and then accidentally bleeds. I'm not sure if it's here or here or wherever, like you bleed when you shave accidentally, like anywhere. And Dracula lunges at him and he's like, oh my God, what the hell? Then, then he's like, oh. but after that, you know, it's like, oh, something bad's gonna happen. It's not gonna be good, probably. This dude is weird, like super weird. He ends up being held captive with three other female vampires. Why? Because sex sells, and then it sells even more with female vampires, because, you know, boobs. People love boobs. Just saying. This is where Harker, poor old innocent Harker realizes Dracula, well he's not just weird, he's actually like totally, ugh. 
in the head and he's a vampire and he's like grab my I'm stuck here. This is also when he finds out Dracula doesn't live. He survives on blood. Ugh. Ew. So gross. And who's next? Hanker. Hanker. Parker's young juicy body's neck. That's when he realizes crap bags. I'm the next victim to this bullshit. He tries to kill Dracula and fails. So Jonathan, so eager, he just fails. Then after he tries to kill him, Dracula floats off into the ether. Well, not the ether, it's like into the distance to these like weird boxes. Parker hasn't got a clue what this is. I didn't when I was reading. It was so scary. Don't read this tonight. But keep in mind this boxes of Earth. That's what they're called in the story. They're boxes of earth. Then weirdly enough, we're back in England. It's the 19th century, so shit's old. It's like really old. Then we're back 19th century with Harker's fiance, Mina Murray. Very Irish name, just saying. And she's visiting her friend, Lucy. Lucy is gonna marry Arthur, but Lucy's like that hot chick. Everybody wants to marry her. So she's after having to kick off like loads of people beforehand, I think. I can't remember. Specifically two characters, Quincy and John. She was gonna marry those two, but she wasn't. She was like, no, I'm sticking with Arthur, a different character. And she's like, so everyone else can piss off. So Mina, Jonathan's fiance, she keeps on visiting Lucy because Lucy keeps on doing these like creepy, like, I'm gonna walk around in my sleep. So she's like really worried about it. So she's like, okay, I'm gonna look out for this crazy ass thing who everybody else is obsessed with. And she's a really weird sleepwalker. So she keeps on sleepwalking. So Mina's like, this is weird. I should look after this. Then one night, Mina follows her to the beach. And she's like, Lucy's like sleepwalking. And there's these ships that have just randomly just landed there. Then later on, Mina finds out, actually this creepy ship is carrying like 50 boxes of earth. What does it all mean? Bear it in mind. More beer. It's a long fucking story. Oh no, I just remembered. They found these boxes when they were both awake. Then Mina finds out Lucy's still walking like a creep around the place, which is just weird. Then one night, Mina, she starts following her while Lucy's sleepwalking, and then she ends up on this bench, and Lucy's sitting there on this bench, just sitting there, staring out over the whole town. And Mina's like, what the hell is that like dark figure beside you? Lucy's asleep, so she's like, I don't know. Well, she's not even like, I don't know. She's like, I'm asleep. The thing is like hovering over Lucy. I mean, it's like, ah, oh. and then it disappears. Ooh. In the morning, Lucy remembers nothing. Mina knows everything, because she's not a creepy sleepwalker. Then Mina notices marks on Lucy's neck. These two dot marks, what does it mean? We know what it means, but the story doesn't know what it means yet. Then it just, it just goes terribly wrong. Lucy gets sicker and sicker. Nothing's helping her. She just keeps getting really sick. I mean, it's like, you're not just creepy walking. You're like, you've got two dots on your neck. What the hell does that mean, you weirdo? Then her former lovers come back. Okay, but they're not just in the form of lovers, they're also doctors, and they're like, I don't know what's wrong with her. This is like, it's really weird. Like, I don't know what to do right now. Then we move swiftly along. Lucy's really sick, but Mina hears that Jonathan is safe and sound, but he's also really sick. So Mina goes to Jonathan, goes, saves him. Then Lucy's two former lovers. They ring Dr. Helsing, cause they're like, maybe he can help us. They t he taught us. Maybe he can teach us some more crap. Like, where the hell are there two dots on her neck? So every day, the two doctors, they keep giving blood transfusions to Lucy, and she keeps getting a, bit, a little bit better. But then she gets worse, like, ugh straight away afterwards, but then she's getting better, worse, it's just a whole crap show. Dr. Helsing, he's like, oh, I actually have a lot of vampire knowledge, so like, I know this crap, I know where it came from, I know what's happening right now, so let's do this shit. Blood transfers, it's gonna do fuck all. So he lathers the room in garlic. 
Because vampires hate that. Garlic is delicious. I don't know why they hate it. Then one night, Lucy's mother's there and they're all staring over Lucy and a vampire comes in the window, scares Lucy's mother to death. She's dead now, she's gone, that's it. And Lucy is attacked again by the vampire. So then he's like, you're gonna have to say goodbye to her. I'm hell sick. I know this crap. Say goodbye to your name. She's no more. So as Arthur goes down to give her a kiss goodbye, Lucy lunges at him and like grabs him. She's a vampire now. Then Hell sings like, no, fuck this shit. Grabs him, saves him, and then Lucy dies. Then she's dead. She's gone now, Lucy. The papers get wind of this and they start reporting about this lady, this creature that people keep on seeing. And that she keeps on attacking children. Hell sings like, like, I know what's happening. She's a vampire. I totally get this thing. So they go to her coffin and break it open. Obviously nobody wants to go to her coffin because this is weird. This is really weird. And they find out, yeah, she's she's still dead. So then we're back to Mina and Jonathan. Mina and Jonathan, they've gone about their lives happily ever after. I know, that's really weird. Mina knows everything that's happened and then she knows everything that's happened with Jonathan. So that's just the way it is. And they're trying to figure out what to do with Lucy. And they're like, oh yeah, because she's a vampire vampire being to cover in garlic, chop her head off and put a thing into her heart, wooden stake. Sounds like a really fun night out. And that's what they do, because that's what you do with friends. You kill vampires. Yeah? Yeah. So then, they finally figured out, they're like, oh, those boxes from Dracula. They're not just boxes of earth. So Helsing is like, okay, we need to get rid of this crap right now. Then all of a sudden he notices something different in Mina. Mina's acting a bit like, I'm a vampire. Great, another vampire added to the fucking list. Then it gets even weirder. So then Helsing randomly goes in and Mina is sucking out of Jonathan's chest. And Dracula is just in the corner being like, no, sorry. And then disappears. Then they discover 49 of the 50 boxes from Dracula. Where was the other box? It went back to Dracula's castle. That was Dracula. They destroyed every other box and there's just one box left. Damn it, it's Dracula and he's gone back to his stupid house. So what do they do? They hypnotize Mina in a certain way and then it brings them back to Dracula's castle and it brings them back to the final box. And then when they find the box, they stick a stake in his heart, rip off his head, stick fucking garlic everywhere because it's delicious, let's be real. And that's it! All the vampires are gone for now. And that's Dracula! What do, you, what do you need to know about reading Dracula? Don't read at night, it's so scary. It's actually really creepy if you read at night. So that's the only thing. And don't become a vampire. So it's a shit buzz. Well, for other people. But for me, it's like, I oh, don't do that. But we, we can't drink together anymore. Because I'm just going to think you're going to like drink my blood. And that'd be it. That's not a cool buzz. <laughs> I hope you enjoy these images and sounds. Tune in weekly for two videos. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends. Maybe people out there, they want to hear Dracula being told by a drunk person. Anyway, I'm going to go. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. This was really hard. This was a really long story. This was really difficult. But I did it. I'm a modern day hero. Not really. I didn't save a kitten from a tree. Yes. Maybe he's like, maybe people put kittens up there to save them. They're like, oh my god, I save a kitten. No, no, Paul. You put the fucking kitten up there, you little shit. Probably. Right.